Hello everyone. I'm Dr. Ankur Bach from Mohali. I'm a practicing endodontist working since 2011. Today's webinar is about endodontic retreatment with a new file from Cold Team called as Hyflex Remover. So we'll specifically talk about convenient and safe gutta percha removal from the canals during retreatment using this Hyflex Remover. Retreatment can be frustrating without proper knowledge, armamentarium, and instruments. We don't want to mess up a already messed up tooth, isn't it? Even though retreatment is time consuming, but if done nicely, retreatments fetches you nice money and referrals. Patients, they always appreciate when we save their teeth. But removing gutta paja from the canal is a tough job. And today we are talking about this only. If we talk about the statistics of retreatment, Globally also, the trend is moving towards retreatments. According to a survey done by American Association of Endodontists, a general practitioner does approximately 30% of the retreatments and just 70% of the normal root canals. If we talk about the endodontists, they perform almost 80% of the retreatments through walk-ins and referrals, while just 20% of the normal root canals. So this shows that people are now more aware about the root canal procedure treatments and want to save their natural teeth instead of op opting for the extraction followed by implants. Endodontic retreatment can be non-surgical or surgical. I'm going to talk about the non-surgical approach of retreatment. That essentially is a procedure to remove root canal filling material from the tooth followed by cleaning, shaping, and obturation of the canals, as described by American Association of Endodontists. The goal of such retreatment, according to Dr. Ruddell, is to remove materials from the root canal space and, if present, address deficiencies or repair defects that are pathologic or inertrogenic in origin. So why do you want to do a retreatment? Retreatment helps us save those teeth where there is a failure of initial root canal treatment. Patient may be having a pain, he might be having some swelling, some sinus, or if we examine on radiograph, there may be some changes. So in those cases, we need to repeat the root canal. Also, in those cases where initial root canal treatment was successful, but now there is a new problem. Problem, like there is a decay of the restoration, there may be a broken crown, there may be a fracture of corneal part of the tooth we need to repeat the root canal treatment. Or sometimes we feel that we are planning for a new prosthesis, but we know our root canal, which is already done, is not up to the mark. It may be not satisfactory. So regardless of the sign and symptom, we need to do the root canal again. What are the causes for failure of initial root canal treatment? There may be improper selection of the treatment strategy. There may be incorrect oral examination some misinterpretation of radiographs such as missing the canals or misreading the anatomy or there may be operative causes. If we talk about the operative causes, first comes the excess preparation. In excess, there may be some perforation in the corneal part leading to failure or there may be under preparation in which we are missing some canal or some over preparation in which the corneal part becomes weak. Failure of root canal arising from canal preparation may be due to some perforations, ledge formations, canal blockage, untreated calcified canals, missed canals, or separation of the instrument. Root canal treatment failure arising from irrigation may be due to incorrect use of irrigants. In most of the cases I've seen, in absence of rubber dam isolation, Dentists are afraid to use full concentrated hypochlorite. In that cases, they prefer mixing it with a normal saline and then using it. That would lead to the failure of the root canal treatment. Also, we need to devote our time for irrigation and activation of the irrigant. Failures arising due to obturation may be because of over obturation of the filling material, some under obturation, obturation which is not up to the working length, some voids are present in the obturation, or periodontal involvement of the uh, lateral and accessory canals. If we talk about other failure causes, there may be poor corneal restoration, 
in many retreatment cases I've seen under the crown, there is just a temporary restoration or some cotton pallets are there which are present. There is no permanent restoration on the coronal part. The other reasons could be uh, some resistant bacteria taking some time. If we talk about economic constraints, uh, dentists not using any uh, proper isolation, proper uh, biomechanical preparation, that may be a reason or inadequate sterilization of the instrument that is also a factor. What is the success rate of retreatment? According to a study done by Simon in 2004, success rate of retreatment goes from 92 to 98% in absence of apical pathology. In cases where apical pathology is present, it ranges between 64 to 70%. If we try to alter the anatomy, there may be chances of zipping, perforation, internal resorption or canal transportation. This may affect our outcome of the treatment. So we need some instruments which respect the original anatomy of the canal. This study was concluded by Gorini and Gagliani in which they found that there was almost 40% of the decrease in the success rate where the instruments altered the anatomy of the canal while doing retreatment. What are the various techniques which we use for removal of gutta percha from the canal? Most common are the hand files, specifically speaking, edge files. They are very risky as they tend to break a lot. They consume a lot of time. And at times we need some solvent to soften the gutta percha. The second are the ultrasonic tips. They are helpful in removal of the uh, broken file from the canals. But for removal of the gutta percha, I'm not pretty sure. But they also alter the anatomy of the canal also. So the risk is there. There's nothing significant talking about the rotary files since 2010 and about reciprocating NITA files, uh, a special handpiece or special endomotor is required. So why there is a requirement of new retreatment file? Looking at the current scenario, we need something which is safe, faster and less technique sensitive. Safe enough to avoid iatrogenic mishaps like perforation and ledge formation. Strong enough to go through the filling material. It should be flexible enough to maintain the original anatomy and easy to use without the fear of separation. Considering all the properties required for a good retreatment file, Coltin has come up with this Hyflex remover as uh, stated by Dr. Walid Nehemi, who is one of the developers for the design of this Hyflex remover. He says this is the state of art of solution for unfilling the tap -tap. So We'll talk about this file now. So if I talk about the features of the Hyflex remover, it can be used as a single file system to remove the gutta percha from the canal. It has a proprietary heat treatment to bypass any previous ledge which is present in the canal and it specifically removes the obturation from the obturation material from the canal. It doesn't alter the anatomy. It has a non-active tip and it has a single wire diameter and it is available in length of 19 and 23 mm. So a file so what makes Hyflex Remover a special file? It can be used as a single file system to remove the obturation from the canal. We'll tell you in coming slides how to use it. It has a proprietary heat treatment which can be used to bypass any ledges if present. It specifically removes the obturation from the canal. It doesn't alter the anatomy of the canal. If we talk about the features, it has a non-active tip. It has a minimal invasive wire diameter of 1 mm. It is available in length of 19 and 23 mm which can be used to cover the entire retreatment. Let's talk about the settings at which Hyflex remover is to be used. It has to be used in continuous rotation at a speed of 400 to 800 rpm. The recommended torque is 2.5 Newton centimeter. The good thing is it is compatible with any of the endo motors or endo hand pieces. I am talking about the blue file which is 3007 in your file pack. So if we talk about high flex remover features and benefits. With just one file we can remove the entire obturation material of the canal. Whether gutta percha or some uh, paste from the canal it can be easily removed. With 30 
1047, the blue file. The file has heat treatment which makes it very flexible. It has a good cyclic fatigue. Uh, it doesn't break easily. It respects the original anatomy of the canal. So if we talk about the protocol, just keep this file 3 mm short of the working length and that will protect the apical area of the canal. If we talk about the design of the high flex remover, it is available in two lengths which are 19 mm and 23 mm and the taper is 07. The ISO size is 30 number. If we talk about the cross section, it has triple helix with open flute. It is asymmetrical in the coronal part and as such it has a regular taper of 0 0.07. This file facilitates the debris removal from the canal. It doesn't push the canal debris into the canal. If we talk about the tip, it is non-active, which decreases the risk of ledges of operation. It, it is very safe to be used. It respects the anatomy. It doesn't perforate the canal. The cutting efficiency is great, which is due to the active edges of the file. Now we'll talk about the high flex removal protocol. In the sorted pack, there are three files given, one red and two blues. Red is the coronal flare file, which is 2509, 17 mm in length, and it is used to gain the initial entry into the canal, uh, let's say about 3 mm into the canal, at a speed of 400 rpm and a maximum torque of 2.5 newton centimeter. Irrigate, then switch on to the blue file, which is 3007, 19 mm, use it at a speed of 400 to 800 rpm, at a maximum torque of 2.5 newton centimeter. Irrigate intermittently and you have to stop 3 mm from your working length. Depending on the length of the canal, you can use your 19 mm or 23 mm file and uh, irrigate in between. Stop 3 mm from the working length. You can use your hand files to remove the remaining gutta percha from the canal or you may use your normal shaping file to shape the canal and remove the gutta pacha. So for high flex EDM users, they can use their orifice opener to gain the entry into the filling material, about 3 mm, in inward and downward motion, gain the entry, irrigate, then they can switch on to high flex remover 3007, irrigate intermittent, right, and uh, use a speed of 400 to 800 RPM, maximum torque of 2.5 newton centimeter stop at 3 mm from the working length stop there change the file you can use your one file or depending upon the severity or complexity of the case you can decide at your own and you can prepare the canal so in natural if i talk about the protocol using high flex remover i can use any orifice opener or the coronal flare file provided in the pack along with high flex remover or I can skip that file I can right away use high flex remover file which is 3007 and uh, I have to stop 3 mm from the working length and for rest of the remaining 3 mm I can use any of the hand files or uh, any of the file system to prepare the canal.
So this is the same case from the previous slide. It's a radix, right lower six. You can see the canals are not nicely cleaned and filled and uh, the patient was having pain. So we decided to do retreatment for this case and the uh, filling material from the canal was removed using high flex remover. The canal preparation, the BMP was completed using high flex EDM. You can see the master cone of uh, X-ray and uh, two post-op angulation x-rays are there you can appreciate the isthmus fill and the canals are nicely cleaned and packed the patient is asymptomatic this is another case of retreatment right row six in which the mesial canals are not properly cleaned even the distal canal is not properly cleaned the canals were retreated the gp was removed using hyplex remover and this is the post-op x-ray. You can see the canals are nicely filled after the treatment. In this case, you can see a discrepancy on the distal side of the restoration. Patient presented with pain. There was some extra oral swelling. So we had to repeat the root, uh, root canal for this patient. There's this immediate post-op on the screen of this patient. And uh, we'll do the prosthetic management in the coming time. This is a case of asymptomatic retreatment. I would say intentional retreatment. Here the patient wanted a change in the prosthesis. So I was not sure about the previous retreatment. As you can see, there is some discrepancy. The, you can see some voids in the obturation and uh, it is not up to the mark. So we repeated the root canal for this patient. Here are the post-op and uh, inverted post-op RVGs. So with this, I would like to conclude about the remover that A, it is a very good file, a very safe file to remove the obturation material from the canal. It doesn't require any solvent to be efficient. It has a B, it has a very short learning curve, maybe one or just two files and the entire obturation material can be removed from the canal. And moreover, it has a proprietary heat treatment for an increased uh, blade, blade flexibility. It has greater fracture resistance. And moreover, it respects the original anatomy of the tooth. Here, I would like to thank Coltine India for giving me this platform. And uh, I was able to present this webinar with you guys. And on the screen, <clears throat> I would like to thank Coltine India for giving this opportunity to me to present this webinar with you guys. On the screen are my details. You can find me on the social media platform, Facebook and Instagram. My WhatsApp number is there. You can buzz me anytime or write me a mail regarding any query. I'll be glad to help you guys. Thank you so much for being a patient listener. And uh, we will take up the questions now.